think that this year we wanted to dedicate our uh, presence at Watches and Wonder to that specific aspect of our watch collection, which is the jewels that tell time. So really, watch is seen from a jeweler's eye. We like to see uh, a watch as a way to tell a story or as a functionality that you integrate into a piece of jewelry. So our collection uh, this year is really paying tribute to that, with probably uh, one of the highlights being uh, the uh, renewal of uh, a series of watches called Ludo, uh, that were uh, named after the, the nickname of uh, Louis Apples in the 1940s, and that are actually a series of secret watches that are more hydrary bracelets uh, in gold and precious stones uh, that do integrate a secret watch dial that uh, reveals itself when you press two elements on the side of the main uh, element. There are also versions in uh, colored stones. There is a very strong tradition at Van Cleef and Apples of working with color. Uh, so we have rubies, we have emerald also in mystery setting, which is a very specific uh, setting and stone cutting technique that were developed by Van Cleef and Apples in the 1930s. Uh, we have a version in pink sapphire. So we, we actually worked uh, around you know, the spectrum of colors that uh, nature is offering us. And uh, along the, the past years or the past decade, we've created quite a few watches around that idea uh, of a fairy that is telling the time. And for that, we revisited the retrograde movement, uh, but instead of using traditional hands, uh, we replaced the hand by uh, the arm and the magic wand of the fairy. And so that's the magic wand that's indicating the hours. We worked on a slightly smaller size and a combination of colors that's more evocative of the sunset. Uh, so it's really a gradation of pink and purple where we associate different techniques of enameling, so enamel paint, but also plique à jour, transparent enameling, uh, with stone setting in sapphires, for instance, to create this uh, you know, miniature uh, painting or a scenery uh, within the frame of the watch. And the back case is also outstanding. Yes, I mean, you know, in, in jewelry and high jewelry, we love to pay attention to details, even the details that you do not see, because this is, you know, we feel part of the personal pleasure of wearing these pieces. So uh, there is also a decor uh, and a story that's told at the back of the watch, yes. Apart from being the expert in high jewelry watches, uh, you're also well known for your automatons. And I uh, know this year the, you brought three uh, clocks. Yes, we indeed love the world of automatons. It has been always a very uh, strong inspiration for us and for our watches. And it's, it's an opportunity for the designers and the craftsmen to uh, expand the story uh, besides the limited size of a watch case. Uh, so it gives a lot of opportunities and uh, we focus here on two uh, inspirations. One is really about uh, astronomical watches and objects, so uh, it's uh, a planetarium. Uh, we already introduced one last year. This is uh, another version where we uh, reworked entirely uh, all the, the jewelry components. So the planets are different, the symbols are interpreted different. It's a different combination of techniques of jewelry and, uh, and uh, wood uh, making. And uh, there's also a specific work that has been developed around the music uh, that was specially uh, composed for the dance of the planet. So it's, a, it's at the same time a very serious object because it shows you the, the movement of the planets in the solar system in a very accurate way. And there is a perpetual calendar attached to it. But it's also a very whimsical object because when you press a button, the planets start to really dance around the dial uh, to go up and down and uh, to uh, kind of navigate you know, on the piece. And the second aspect we wanted to focus on is more uh, the idea of the celebration of uh, nature and movement and lightness. So it's actually two different automatons, but that uh, are based on the same uh, idea in a way. Uh, one is a flower, a kind of gi gigantic flower uh, that is closed and that will uh, progressively open up to reveal uh, a butterfly that actually appears from the heart of the flower. Uh, and the other is more a, a bouquet. So here we worked with a, a series of small flowers uh, with the same idea of uh, opening up that bouquet to reveal uh, another little creature, another butterfly made entirely uh, in uh, enameling and precious stones uh, that would start to flap his wing for about uh, one minute. Uh, there is also a chime and uh, a presence of music in the piece. And you also have a really nice stand here. Why did you decide to recreate the forest here? And uh, I guess it's like handmade uh, everything. 
But we, we always want to uh, create an experience, uh, be it you know, in our stores, in exhibition, in events, uh, that is very consistent with the story that we tell through our collection and our products. So this year we wanted to create this uh, representation of a kind of imaginary forest at sunset. So it's a slightly uh, darker tones. Uh, we worked with uh, a lot of different uh, craftsmen under the supervision of Jean-Baptiste Auvray, who is the architect with whom we work. So you have uh, 12,000 leaves that are handmade uh, in glass, uh, Switzerland and in Murano. Uh, we worked with uh, a lacquer specialists, uh, gold leaf experts to create uh, something that's uh, at the same time, I think, very whimsical, very uh, organic, a bit like a forest, but with uh, some reminiscence of uh, Art Deco and Art Nouveau uh, craftsmanship and techniques. And uh, speaking about the future, what are your highlights for the 2023? Uh, many, many... Um, you know, initiatives. So, of course, this new collection that we will continue to uh, to show and to promote. We have a new hydrary uh, collection that we're going to launch in uh, June. Uh, we have a lot of initiatives also uh, in terms of uh, commitments of, uh, of the brand, commitments to education and culture with uh, L'Ecole, the School of Jewelry Arts, uh, that's been present in uh, Paris for 11 years now and in Hong Kong for three years. And that's opening two new campuses this year, one in Shanghai, one in Dubai. Uh, and also a lot of programs uh, that have to do with our relationship to the world of dance and choreography, uh, where we support institutions and uh, dance companies uh, all around the world, uh, with a festival uh, starting in Hong Kong in a few weeks uh, and in New York in the fall. So we need to expect some ballerina-inspired uh, watch collection. Yes, of course, in the collection and on stage. Uh, you know, it's, it's a world that's very, very dear to us. And uh, we're actually starting to work on some projects also with the Geneva Ballet. So uh, a lot of uh, local uh, you know, support as well. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Have a good day. Thank you.